All right, guys, today's the day. Hell has finally frozen over. We're going to go pick up a Ford, an LS powered Ford. And it's fuel injected. So we all load up into the Suburban and start our four and a half hour trek from Central Ohio to Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, right on the Maryland, West Virginia border. It's the longest short drive <laughs> I think we've ever made. We were to meet the owner of the car at the Berkeley Springs Airport, right across the Potomac River. In fact, the entrance to the airstrip is right in the middle of the bridge crossing the Potomac River. As we make our way back the driveway, we finally spot the little Falcon sitting on a trailer at the entrance gate to the airstrip. The airstrip itself is basically built on a sandbar in the middle of the Potomac River. It's one of the most beautiful places we've ever gone to race. The Little Falcon was built by Chris Pilato, entirely by Chris Pilato. Everything from the wing to the hood and the lower valance is custom made by him. It's powered by a Mike Lau 370 cubic inch twin turbo LS engine with trick flow cylinder heads. While we're checking out the Falcon, Chris's kids are checking out the RC cars that Billy brought to put towards the car in partial trade. The little Falcon has a lot of cool points. It still has its original steering wheel, original dash panel, the original radio is still in the dash. It still has its factory door panels, roll up and down windows, and it's sitting on a really nice set of double bead lock weld magnum wheels tucked up in the original quarter panels. After a quick shakedown trip down the airstrip, Chris opens a laptop and starts explaining to Billy all the different things that you can do with the Holley system. Meanwhile, I climb underneath the car and check out the tubular front K member and the Fox body front suspension. This car, this Falcon, is like no other Falcon you'll ever see. Chris's kids had waited as long as they could possibly wait, so we get out the RC cars to let them play for a little while while we talk business. We finally strike a deal on the car, and it's time to load up and head home. We made a quick pit stop at Pizza Hut in Berkeley Springs to get a bite to eat, then over to the Sheets gas station to top off the fuel tank, and we headed home. All right, guys, so as you saw in uh, Billy's video, we got the little Falcon and it's home. And I just went down to uh, Mark's at A1 Auto Parts and we fashioned up this beautiful funnel. <laughs> we call it the Falcon funnel because the Falcon's fuel cell is custom made. It's in the trunk and uh, it still uses the factory fuel filler neck. So we had to, we had to make this sexy little funnel here. But anyway, uh, you know, as Billy said in his video, this is an opportunity for us to learn new things. Um, it's turnkey, it's ready to go. It's already got a good bass tune in it. It's already on methanol. It's got 16 injectors. You know, um, everybody thinks that I'm anti LS and anti fuel injection and anti computer everything. And that's not really the case. Uh, it's just one of those things that we kind of got stuck in this rut where we couldn't afford any of that. But we wanted to race and we wanted to compete and I wasn't going to allow excuses to stop us from competing. So we did the best we could with what we had, which was a 6AL2 box and a carburetor, you know? Uh, and we're not done competing that way. We're not done 
pushing that truck to go faster. It's, it's, it's faster right now than it's ever been, and there's still a lot more in it. But the little Falcon back here is going to allow us to learn as we go uh, how to use the traction control and how to tune the fuel injection. And, uh, you know, it's got shock sensors on it. It's got drive shaft sensor. It's got front wheel sensor. It's got anything and everything that we need to learn how to set up advanced tables in the Holly. And we're going to do that. So I would say, <clears throat> based off what we saw yesterday, if you watched Billy's video, the first pass off the trailer was so bad we almost didn't buy it. Uh, <clears throat> it was uh, it was pretty bad, and you know we don't know anything about this computer. So I did what I always do. I took video. I went back and I sat in the suburban, <clears throat> just like we do the S10, and I watched the the rear suspension, the front suspension, and the sidewall of the tire. We have good uh, background with the Hoosier uh, D06, which is what's on this car. We've, we've used those before. So they're on a 10 inch rim. We know about how much air pressure to run in a D06 on a 10 inch rim. Um, so we made some adjustments and right off the bat, we took two tenths off the 60 foot without looking at anything on the computer, just simply doing it old school like we've always done we just look at the video we look what the car's doing we look at the tire and that got us started and from that point on chris started helping us uh showing us the data and i'm telling you right now we took this car in less than five passes and within five passes we took a car we had never driven and we're within six hundredths of Billy's fastest pass at Digger Die on that airstrip over there that's got grass growing up through it. I mean, there's nothing there and it is coarse. It's just as bad as Digger Die, honestly. It's, it's pretty freaking terrible. So, you know, I think that given our background and doing everything the old school way, watching a video and, you know, licking your finger, feeling which way the wind's blowing. That's how we've always done things. So if you take our experience in doing things the old way, and now you introduce real-time data, drive shaft data, front wheel data, I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's like, it's like being blindfolded in a dark room and looking for, uh, a thumbtack in a dark room and carpet and taking the blindfold off and turning the light on. It's so much easier. <laughs> it's so much easier. So I think that once we get used to using this Holly and in the, in the Falcon, I would imagine you're going to see Holly on the S10 and Tommy's S10. And even if we stick with the carburetor, which I fully intend to do, on at least Billy's truck, probably Tommy's too, but at least Billy's because it's on methanol. I don't, I'm not a big fan of injectors on methanol because I just, I see these guys hanging injectors all the time and filling cylinders full of fuel and bending connecting rods. And it's just, I don't trust it. it it's gonna take a while for me to trust that shit, to be honest with you. But I think that uh, once we get comfortable with it and we learn it, uh, you know, there's a, there's a good chance you may see some of that stuff on the other trucks. But for right now, we're going to take this little Falcon and see if we can't ram it up somebody's hiney hole. Tommy's going to be driving it this weekend. We're going to Marion tonight to let Tommy make his first few laps in this thing safely and get his feet wet. So, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for supporting our family. If it wasn't for the viewership and the support from everybody buying merchandise and everything, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing, guys. So as this old dog learns new tricks, I will share with everybody what I'm learning, how I'm learning it, 
and what it means to have this kind of technology in front of an old guy like me who's always done it old school. See you next time.